welcome to episode 2 of Cheap Wine and 29. It is day 3 of being 29 and so far so good. Today I have taken you out of my kitchen to a much nicer scenery. I am currently sitting beside the pool at my apartment complex. It is lovely out here. Firstly, let's get down to business. Cheap wine. Today's cheap wine comes courtesy of my housemate Pat, who I stole this from. I just found it in the fridge and I know it belongs to him, but I don't care. It's a 2004 Simeon Savion Blanc Margaret River Henpecked. You know it's cheap because it comes in a small bottle. Um, and it's a Qantas wine, uh, so it's definitely cheap and nasty. Let's give it a go, shall we? smells like white wine. Pretty good actually. Not too sweet, not too dry. Nice fruity flavour. Oh yeah, that is going to go down very well. Alright, so let me tell you something else about myself. I am a pharmacist. The time when I tell someone that I'm a pharmacist, I get bombarded with the same questions. Can I get them Dexies? Do I know how to make speed? Do I have a meth lab at home? Can I get them some Valium? Do I wear a lab coat at work? Do pharmacists make a lot of money? Do I know a good hangover cure? Can pharmacists write prescriptions for themselves? The answer to all of those questions is no. Especially the money part, because after all, this is called cheap wine in 29. I feel like if I was making good money, I would be nice wine in 29. Speaking of wine. As far as pharmacy stories go, I'm quite limited as to what I can tell you because of professional conduct and um, you know, patient privacy and confidentiality and basically I don't want to lose my job. Uh, but there have been some amazing stories over the years. I mean, I have been shoved, I've been spat on, I have been abused and called names, I have been hit on by elderly women, everything. It's a crazy industry um, and you know, there's a few stories from many years ago that are my favourite and I'm pretty sure it's safe to tell those because I don't even know what their names were and it was years ago. There was this woman who brought in a baby, the baby was about six to eight months old, quite young and the baby had a rash and the mother was explaining to me that she had been feeding the baby Fanta uh, in a bottle to try and get the baby better from a cold or something and then the baby come down with a rash and she was worried that the baby had an allergy to oranges because of the orange juice in the Fanta. There was just so many things wrong with that scenario, I just didn't even know what to say. Then there is a story where I had a gentleman ring me and explain to me that he loved swallowing his own semen. Um, he was supposedly straight. Uh, and apparently he should just do it all the time when he was sitting with girls and the girls would get a bit weirded out by it because he was, you know, guzzling up his own cum. And he explained to me that he just really loved the taste and just loved doing it. He wanted me to tell him what the nutritional benefits of doing it were so that he could somehow justify it to his partners. I mean, I've been shown some crazy things as a pharmacist. I remember one time years ago when I think I was still a, stu a pharmacy student someone walked in with a, one of those like glad sandwich bags, the plastic bags, and um, put it on down on the counter and it was literally full of fecal matter and in that fecal matter was swimming this bunch of worms. He had literally fished it out of the toilet and come in to show me, asking me what it was. I don't need to see that sort of shit, okay? Like, just get out of my pharmacy. But what astounds me most as being a pharmacist is that people just don't take care of themselves and don't know when to see a doctor or don't know how to seek medical attention when they need it. It's just people come in with, you know, they'll, come, they'll have like fallen through a plane of glass like three days ago and they sort of hobble into the pharmacy with like a tea towel tied or like tourniquet around their leg and their leg's still bleeding and there's a big open wound there and they're like, oh, what should I do? Do you have anything for this? Like, you need to go to a hospital, you need to go to a hospital about three days ago, you're probably going to die. It's probably infected, I hope your leg falls off. Um, but no, obviously I can't say that sort of thing, I need to be that 
really positive, helpful pharmacists, and I always try and do that. Um, and I think my current clientele will agree that I do go above and beyond in my um, the professional service as a pharmacist. People probably question whether I actually am a pharmacist because I don't look that intelligent. But I do have glasses now. What do you reckon? I don't really need them. I don't wear them very often. It's only for seeing long distances, like driving at dusk or uh, going to the cinema. Um, and I don't really like wearing them. But some people say I look really good in them and then I suit them and I should keep wear them all the time. They kind of annoy me when I wear them a bit. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Tell me, do I suit glasses? Should I be wearing glasses? I'm gonna wear them for the rest of the video now so you get a good idea of what they look like on me. I'm on a health kick have been for the majority of this year. It was going very well. Uh, I lost about four kilos actually this year. Um, and even I had some abs going as well. Like, you know, the right lighting, the right angle, the right time of day, the right planetary alignment. Yeah, there was definitely some abs there, but of course then my birthday happened and um, everyone just loaded me up with cake and chocolate. It's kind of like adding insult to injury really, you know, like, hey, you're getting old, here's some cake and chocolate so you can get fat as well. I really should have picked a better theme for my show because if I'm going to be on a health kick, I really shouldn't be drinking wine every day. But you know, I figure it's kind of like it's mostly grapes, right? That has to be good for you, you know. But some parts of the health kick I don't mind. I do like exercising, and it's sort of become part of my daily routine now. Uh, head on down, do some cardio and some weights. Um, Listen to some Sia. Sia's new album, This Is Acting, came out I think about a week or two ago and it is amazing. You need to get this album and make sure you get the deluxe edition because it has these bonus tracks and one of which is Fist Fighting a Sand Song, which is one of my personal favourites. But yes, I pretty much listen to Sia all the time. Was this fire in a sandstorm? But I ain't boxing anymore. the road just because got a pram But in all seriousness, I did actually injure myself on the treadmill. Um, I'm in a lot of pain right now. The wine is helping. But uh, my back, my hip, my right knee, my right ankle. I'm supposed to be going out on Saturday night for some birthday drinks, but at this stage, I don't actually know if I'll be able to walk. I'm definitely going to win train wreck of the year. And I'm all out of wine. Please like my video, subscribe, leave a comment, ask me some questions, follow me on Instagram, help me get this show off the ground, okay? Um, no, there's nothing nicer than when I get up in the morning and check the socials and see all the people that have um, loved what I do and it's a very nice feeling, it leaves me all warm and tingly inside. That could actually also be the wine, all the multiple injuries sustained from the treadmill incident. 
But either way, I need to go to the bottle shop now. So yeah, I hope you liked episode two. Thank you for watching and make sure you tune in on Sunday for the special Valentine's Day edition of Cheap Wine and 29.